The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has rolled out aggressive strategies in transforming the ports in Ghana with the aim of making them the leading trade and logistics hubs in West Africa. As part of these strategies, Tema Port has seen a lot of infrastructural activities over the past few years, including the state-of-the-art MPS Terminal 3. The port of Takwadi, which was built in 1928, has been regarded by many as an export-oriented port. However, the this focus is of port operations and the center of minerals and natural resources in the West African SAP region. The Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, DPHA, with the support of the Ministry of Transport, has contracted Amandi Investment Limited to develop... make Ghana the leading destination for drive-all cargo sector investment in Africa. Construction include paving of the bulk terminal area, its main access road, the manganese and the bauxite stockpile areas, design, supply and install and commission the main conveyor systems, utility services, control and administration building and
So please let all remain seated as we expect the president and the dignitaries to join us very soon. And the program would commence in a very short time. Thank you very much. Cultural troop. A Pachamuma, a Grok, a Krawaina, young fine JJ, or my penny, and young penny for Tata. Thank you. 
Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's be upstanding as we welcome his, the president to the function. Please let's be upstanding and let's have the national. President of the Republic he is accompanied by the Honorable Transport Minister, the Honorable Western Regional Minister, the Board Chairman for GPHA, the Director General, and other dignitaries. PHA Port of Takra to have the presence of the President of the Republic. We are indeed grateful. It is an honor to have the presence of the President of the Republic, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado.
In the company of the President is the Honorable Minister for Transport, Honorable Kweku Ofori Esiyama. We also have the Western Regional Minister, who is also an MP, Honorable Governor Ochre Dakon. We have the Board Chairman for GPHA, Honorable Isaac Osei. We also have the Director General for the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Mr. Michael Luguje. We have Honorable Ejapa. Let us get ready with the Please can we have the national anthem? Please let's have the national anthem. Thank you very much, Naval Band. Thank you very much, Naval Band. My name is Kingsley Nchibwe Siako. I'm the Marketing and Public Affairs Manager for Takwa Reports. My co-MC is Joseph Ajete, also of Takwa Reports. President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. Honorable Minister for Transport, Honorable, Honorable Kweku Ofori Esiyama, Nananum here present, the Western Regional Minister, Honorable Kwabna Ochre Daku Mensa, the Chairman and Ranking Member of the Parliamentary Select Committee for Roads and Transport, the Board Chairman for GPHA, Honorable Isaac Osei, the Director General for Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Mr. Michael Luguje, the Board, Management, Unions and Staff of GPHA, the Directors of Port here present, the Board and Management of Ibistec Limited, the Board and Management of Prime Meridian Docks, CEOs of various institutions, Commanders here present, our friends from the media, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you on behalf of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to today's commissioning and sword cutting of Takrade Port Expansion Projects to be, carried out, to be carried out by none other than the President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado. It is now time, it is now time for opening prayer but right before that i would like to call on nana kwesi it's okay i'd like to call on nana kwesi abaka the paramount chief of new takrade to pour libation 
for us to start the event, please. Nana Kwesi Abakada first, Paramount Chief of New Takrade. Please let's put our hands together for Nana as he comes to perform the necessary customs. And pay for the Unimamamra on Say Amamre. But you're my insane man and I'm paying you for Abraham Obey. But your woman wants some mana, a woman wants some mana. That was Nana Kwesi Abaka the first, the chief of New Takrade. Nana Kwesi Abaka the first, the chief of New Takrade. Nana Yadawase. At this moment, we are going to call on Reverend Dr. Richard Ferdinand Obing the second D area superintendent of the apostolic church ghana please put your hands together as he comes to give us the opening prayer respectfully please shall we rise for a word of prayer thank you we begin this program in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit we, are, we stand in awe of you, O God, for you are the creator, sustainer, and controller of the entire universe. We are so thankful, O God, for the gift of life. And we bless you, O God, for the life of our dear president, His Excellency, Nana Ado Dankwe Kufuado. We want to bless you for all his ministers here and for all the dignitaries present here. We are so thankful unto you. You have brought us from far and from near. And we appreciate all that you have done for us. We say thank you, Lord. It is for a purpose. That is why we are gathered here. And it is my prayer, O God, that you descend in your power. It is my, my prayer, O God, that you descend in so much strength, O God, that you take absolute control over this program. Let your name be glorified and let all praise be given unto you at the end of it all. We are so thankful, Lord. And we thank you again once in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Reverend Dr. Richard Ferdinand Obey. 
At this moment, I'm going to call on Reverend Joseph Ajete Ajayi to help us with the introduction of the dignitaries. Thank you, Doc. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of some dignitaries that we have with us here this morning. Please join me acknowledge the presence of the Western Regional Minister and the person of Honorable Kwame Ochre. Honorable Kwame Ochre, Dr. sir. Salute, you are most welcome. We also have we also have here in our list the board chairman of GPHA in the person of Honorable Isaac, Isaac Osei. Sir, you are most welcome. We have with us here the Director General of GPHA in the person of Mr. Michael Liberty. Sir. We also have with us the Minister for Transport, Honorable Kweku Ufoyesiyama. Honorable Kweku Ufoyesiyama. We have with us Director of National Security, Director of State Protocol, National Security Advisor. We have the Deputy Chief of Staff. Let's quickly jump to acknowledge the presence of some traditional leaders and then we'll continue with the rest of the dignitaries. We have with us here the Vice President of the Western Region House of Chiefs, is the Omaihele of Jigra Traditional Area, in the person of Awule Angamatu Ajan II. Nana, we appreciate your presence. We also have with us the representative of the Chief of Takrade, Nana Kwesu Kweku Manso the Fourth. Nana Kweku Manso the Fourth. Nana Emaokwaba. We have with us here Nana Kwesi Abakan the First, the Chief of New Takrade. We have Nana Asifukuma the Fourth, the Puasi Chief. The last but not the least, we have Nana Kofi Tom in Kontompo Chief. Doc will take over from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Ajete. Please, before we have a, a, a brief safety talk by our fire and safety manager, we would also like to acknowledge the presence of Honorable George Murekuduka, MP for Takwa in CIM. Deputy Minister Lands and Natural Resources. We also have Honorable Ejapa Mensa, Ejapa Mesa, Deputy Minister of Energy. And then we also have Osman Yakra, Cluster General, CMA, CGM. Please, at this juncture, it is very important for us to have a brief safety talk by our fire and safety manager. So I'd like to call on Mr. Nab Daisy to come and give us a brief safety talk. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. His Excellency Nana Abdul Dankwa Akufuadu, the President of the Honorable Ufuri Isiyama, the transport manager, sorry, transport minister, all other ministers herein guarded, the board chairman, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Honorable Isaac Osei, the director general, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Mr. Michael Lukuji, and his team, Nanano. All other protocol duly observed. I will start by saying welcome to Takra Report. Today I'm glad to state that you are part of our safety team. 
you matter who you, you are part of our safety team. Wherever you come from, you are part of our safety team today in our premises. And safety begins with good teamwork. And I know you cooperate with us. As an ISO certified port, working on the four ISO standards, quality management system, environmental management system, occupational health and safety, information, security management system. I would like to say that your safety within and around the port is our first priority. And in order to accomplish this goal, it is essential that you are taken through the port safety arrangement for you to stay safe during this program. I want to create an awareness that this venue is surrounded by sea. We have water edge at our back, just at our back, on our left, and also on our right. We therefore advise our visitors to stay within the confines of the program and not trespass to water edge. The port is a no smoking port. Just at our, our right, we have petroleum pipelines, and we would like you to respect that. In the event of emergency, we are all expected to move westward in the direction we all came from. And at the real crossing, you can exit left through the port that is gate 10, and also could turn right through New Takradi Roundabout Road to safety. All invited guests are advised to restrict their movement within the designated walkways provision on this pier. I would like to still emphasize that on this pier, just beside the behind us, we have deep sea. Some few years ago, here, as we sit, it's a deep sea. So just be guided accordingly. We have washroom booths just at my immediate right. You can also use the building just before us. For your privacy and convenience, we have our fire safety team combat ready and designated medical first aid posts and ambulance services with qualified medical staff to attend to you when the need arises. On behalf of GPHA management, we hope you will have an enjoyable experience here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we would receive the welcome address for this, I guess, ceremony. And to do as the honors is the regional minister in the person of Honorable Kabna Oche Daho. Let's welcome him to the club as he comes, please. Hello, hello. Your Excellency, Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu, President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Honorable Minister of Transport, Honorable Kweku Ofori Esiama, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Mrekuduka. Deputy Minister for Energy, Honorable Ejapa Mesa, Board Chairman, Director General and Management of GPHA, Chief Executive of AT Container and Multipurpose Terminal and Managing Director of Prime Meridian Docks, Nanano, Distinguished Invited the Media Ladies and Gentlemen. I am very happy to be part of this important occasion to welcome you all to witness the transformational information put up in this region of our dear country. Your Excellency, today as always, I feel very happy and honored to have you welcome once again to the Western region as your appointed representative and to my constituency as the member of parliament for the Takrade constituency.
which encompasses this very Mr. President, on GP Workers' Day, 16 November 2008, you are here in this spot with me. And in that plot, In, while in opposition in 2014 myself and other colleagues went to court to liberate the Takrade port to enhance its mandate to continue port expansion when the government of the day at that time in 2014 had forcefully introduced a clause in an agreement in parliament to stop in the Espacrade port. Until that new port is built and they are able to pay off all their debt. Yet, we prevailed. That is why today we are here. Two years ago, in 2020, I welcomed the Vice President of the Republic here on these very grounds and assisted him on your behalf to commission the nearby liquid bulk terminal and cast sword for the dry bulk terminal phase two project. It is worthy of note that at that time, construction of the 16 meter draft deep water ATS container and multipurpose tenwa project phase one, which began earlier in 2019 under your government, was endlessly in progress. So to have you, Your Excellency, come here today to not only commission and visit these two projects but also to cast out for two more projects in the Takradi Harbour. <laughs> Namely, the upstream oil and gas services terminal and the floating dock project for maintenance and repair of offshore supply vessels from across West Africa tells a lot about the commitment and performance of your government to transform the economic development infrastructure of the region and the country as a whole. To the people of Western region, this unprecedented commissioning and sword cutting of projects on the same day in the region can only mean one thing about you and your government, which is that you walk your talk as you deliver on your promises. This is indeed a tangible classic example of a four more to do more in action in the Western region. These and other ongoing synergistic transport infrastructure projects like the PTC interchange aimed at easing traffic bottlenecks for efficient economic activities, the people of Western Region and I say we are most grateful. Mr. President, Ayaze Papa, Ayaze Dodo. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the role of the port of Takrade is a major propeller of economic activities of the Western region cannot be overemphasized. And the role will become even more significant after the combination of the state-of-the-art automated bulk terminal and the completion of the 16-meter draft deep water ATS container and multipurpose terminal project, as well as the completion of two other projects um, you have cut the sword for today already before we got to the Deba grounds. You have also constructed two fishing ports, one in Discov and one in Axim, and a never port in Ezilebu in the Jomro district. Clearly, Mr. President, when Gorgis Beg came to Ghana, he built the Takradi port. When Dr. Kwame Nkrumah became president, he built the naval base. When Honorable uh, J.J. Rollins, President J.J. Rollins, President, he built a second fishing harbor. Mr. President, you alone, you have built four, four 
four ports in the western region clearly mr president you are a history maker you are a history maker your excellency we therefore thank you for presiding over such a massive infrastructure development in the western region i am excited and grateful because it means increased economic activities in the region i am again excited and grateful because it means more jobs in the region and what most people don't know is that mr president when you came to office the government of ghana had employed 320,000 workers in the public sector under your tenure you have employed 400,000 and you are still employing as i speak to you today clearly when it comes to employment mr president you are also a history maker so whilst others call you a do show boy a do free shs a do guy guy i call you a do jobs jobs a do jobs jobs because you have shown over there that you are a history maker mr president Mr. President, indeed, I'm excited and grateful because it means more value to come from the upstream oil and gas offshore Cape Three Point oil fields to the port. And additional skills development partnership opportunities for the Takradi Technical University and the Takradi Technical Institute. In this regard, Your Excellency, I also like to highlight the fact that Western Region, together with our baby sister, Western North Region, produce more than 50% of Ghana's cocoa and they deserve to feel its impact along the export value chain. Beyond what government pays directly to farmers, I therefore appeal to Cocoa Marketing Company to fast track efforts to make the port of Takrade their hub for all cocoa exports in order to expand the associated job opportunities for the people in the region, especially as with coming into operation the 80 years container and multipurpose terminal by Ebistec and shipping lines can no longer have any excuse concerning draft limitation in calling at the Takra report. Mr. President, I also want to make it clear that we have enough space at the Takra report for businesses, for shippers, for oil and gas companies, and for tourism communities. In fact, there is no congestion in the Takra report. And the ease of doing business here in Takrade is very excellent. Currently, Mr. President, in partnership with the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Tourism, GPHA, Ghana Tourism Authority, and Sansike Stores, the Western Regional Coordinating Council has been facilitating the making of the Takrade port, the cruise ship hub for the West Africa subregion. Currently, we have confirmed. 11 port calls for cruise ships for the next 10 months. Two of them have already come last two weeks, Saturday and this Sunday. And on the 10th, the third one would be coming. Clearly, Mr. President, with an average tourist of 1,500, we know that if you can make 20 ships call here, we'll be able to get over 30,000 tourists next year through the port of Takrade. It is on this note that, Mr. President, I also personally and publicly invite you and all gathered here, including Ghanaians here and abroad, to our annual Christmas popular culture event called the Tadi Fancy Festival. Other people call it Ancos. Others call it Westside Carnival. Tidy Fest. Western Mac masquerade kaka mutobi te 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 because sekendi takradi as we speak now is the only christmas city of ghana for 24th 25th 26th 27th december 2020 you are all welcome back to takradi for our christmas at this juncture with my heart filled with joy i say mr president and your entourage and all gathered here that you are all welcome to the Western region. 
where the best of Ghana is. Western region, Yawazoye. Western region, the best comes from the rest. Thank you very much and may God bless. Please let's put our hands together for Honorable Regional Minister for that wonderful speech and that wonderful welcome address. Before we call on the Director General for GPHA for his speech, please, it is important for us to recognize the presence of Mrs. Kujo, the Western Regional Representative on the Council of State. Please put your hands together for Mrs. Kujo. It is my honor at this juncture to invite the Director General of GPHA. Please put your hands together for Mr. Michael Luguje. Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Akufo Ado, Honorable Minister for Transport, Honorable Regional Minister for Western Region, Chairman and members of the GPJ Governing Board, Nananum, our traditional leaders, distinguished captains of the maritime transport and trade industry, our special stakeholders from Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, private sector participants, distinguished guests, the media, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I think the regional minister has captured a lot of the technical detail about the port, so I will spare us the time of having to repeat the projects, except to say that on behalf of the board and management of GPHA, we wish to express our sincere appreciation to you, Your Excellency, for making time to grace this very important occasion in the history of GPHA. This is the first time in the life of Ghana Boston Abbas Authority that on a single day, we are commissioning two mega projects and also cutting sword to commence the construction of two big ones. And all these ones, all these are happening because of, like the regional minister said, your vision and the strategy you have in place to ensure that infrastructure is sufficient across the country to promote trade and employment. We have, as indicated, you had the opportunity to visit each of the project sites. The technical information has been provided, which I wouldn't want to recall. You are commissioning today the dry bulk jetty. Wherever we are sitting here, the entire place was the sea, which has been reclaimed into land. And this particular location was strategically picked to give you the opportunity to see the old on that side and then the new in terms of the, the dry bulk jetty. And as the details indicated, the old facility only had the capacity to handle 400 metric tons per hour. And this new facility has the capacity to handle 2,500 tons per hour. That is significantly a lot of value for shippers and shipping lines. Time will be much shorter to discharge cargo or load cargo. And that translates into cost savings and, of course, prosperity for the cargo owner. And certainly that will translate into savings also in terms of input costs for cement. Your Excellency, I think for, for the dry bulk jetty to be able to generate the expected value in totality, railway development will be very important to convey uh, clinker and bauxite from the mines. We want to use this opportunity to humbly appeal to the Ghana Railway Development Authority to at least ensure that the Western Rail line is constructed as quickly as possible to help us achieve this. This facility that has been developed, certainly with loans contracted from, by, on, by GP to commercial loans, will also be recouped from revenues that will be generated. And by so doing, we are engaging cargo owners on the appropriate tariff to apply to ensure that this very, very mega project is paid back as quickly as possible. Your Excellency, the container terminal, multipurpose terminal, that one is a, a BOT and a PPP with um, Atlantic Port Services made up of a consortium of EBSTEC, AFC Equities, and Ghana Ports and Arbors Authority. 
that terminal, as you heard, has a capacity that is rivaled across the sub-region, just like Tema MPS minus 60 meters. And Abidjan just last week opened a similar terminal. And then, of course, Liki in Lagos and Lumi in, 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 in Togo. But the competition is very, very important because Ghana has a special attraction for which, even if you have similar facilities across other regions and countries, we have a special attraction that will bring ships to our country. And the MPS in Tema is a testimony to the attraction or attractiveness of our country. So we are happy to be in the highly competitive environment where we have the latest state-of-the-art facilities. And as indicated also about the, the, the floating dock facility, currently we have oil in Ghana, but across the sub-region, we don't have a state-of-the-art modern ship repair and ring repair facility. So this prime meridian docks facility is going to help make Takradi the most attractive in terms of ship repairs and rig repairs. The oil and gas services terminal, of course, is within GPH's vision to position Takradi port as the oil and gas services hub. And indeed, that facility that will be completed in the next 18 months will appropriately position this port in this regard. Your Excellency, we want to just use this opportunity to specifically acknowledge our private sector partners, IBSTEC, AFC, Equity, Prime Meridian Docks, and of course, the various banks that supported us to raise funds to be able to develop this project. We have the KBC of Belgium, GCB, Ecobank, and GT Bank. These are partners that help us raise the needed funds to develop these facilities. And I'm aware that for the Prime Meridian Docks, Afrexim Bank is also supporting in this regard. We are also grateful to our very, very competent contractors that have helped to develop these mega facilities. Amandi, China Harbor, we have Josh Moore, and Jean Dunou. Indeed, these are international standard contractors, and the facilities themselves tell as to their competence. We are grateful for this partnership. Your Excellency, I wish to use this opportunity to specifically to management and staff of Ghana Post and Abbas Authority for the dedication with which they have supported this entire project and this modern facility that was being built. A lot of questions were being asked whether we are going to engage some expatriates to come and run it or we can do it ourselves. Your Excellency, I'm very proud to inform you that this entire facility will be run by GPH staff. And they have been competently trained and they are highly motivated to ensure that it works. And indeed, our expectation is also that when the oil and gas services terminal is completed, GPH will 100% run that facility as well. So we are really grateful for the encouragement we've received and the support in terms of finances for us to develop these facilities. Your Excellency, I wish to conclude my brief statement by expressing sincere appreciation to your, yourself and your government for the facilitation and support you've given, not just to Ghana Post and Abbas Authority, but to trade facilitation in general. Because ports by nature depend on trade. Trade must flow fluently through the ports for, it, for investment to be recovered. But we've received two major flagship trade facilitation initiatives under your, your government. One of them is the Paperless Port Project. Indeed, this is a project that has that started and has revolutionized cargo clearance in our ports and has really saved cargo clearance time and improve regulation. The second and most important one is also the integrated customs management system, which you bravely ensured we were able to set it up within record time. Indeed, at the time ICOMS was to come on board, the fears were that the short period that was given to the earlier partners to, 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 to step out for us to take over was too short and that trading and cargo clearance in Ghana would collapse. I remember midnight meetings in your office 12 midnight, 1 a.m., where you are following up to know about the progress we are making on it. And you kept encouraging us that you are sure we can do it. It must be Ghanaian owned and must work. Indeed, ICOMS has become a flagship and a model for the entire sub region that many other ports are coming and customs administrations are coming to, uh, to learn from. So we are really grateful for this and wish to especially commend you. Thank you very much. I want to just then conclude by. Thanking you, Mr. Excellency, Your Excellency, once more, 
and your entire entourage, Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, invited guests, for joining us today for this very important occasion. Thank you very much. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has rolled out aggressive strategies in transforming the ports in Ghana with the aim of making them the leading trade and logistics hubs in West Africa. As part of these strategies, Tema Port has seen a lot of infrastructural activities over the past few years, including the state-of-the-art MPS Terminal 3. Zoo Kifli Abdul-Wahid. Sir, you're most welcome. Thank you. We'll be receiving very, very, very brief messages from some of our key stakeholders. And to do us this honest is the boss of Stan Prime Meridian Dogs, PMD, Prime Meridian Dogs in the person of Mr. Stanley Aholu. Let's welcome him with a clap as he comes to give us a very brief message. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Danko Akufuado, uh, the Honorable Minister of Transport, uh, the Honorable Minister of the Western Region, uh, all other ministers, the, the Board Chairman and Management of GPHA, Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wish to thank, just use this opportunity to thank the President and then to thank GPHA um, for enabling us get to where we've gotten to today as Prime Meridian Dogs at Private Enterprise in collaboration with Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to build the most modern ship repair and maintenance facility along the west coast of Africa. Now, it's important for me to say that this has been a collaboration between private enterprise and government, and I would elaborate on that, even though uh, it's taken us eight years to do this, Mr. President, and I would explain also why it's taken us these eight years, because that will be informative for any enterprise seeking to do business at the scale at which we uh, uh, started and endeavored to do so. Um, but it's important to mention that we, in 2014, we came to GPHA and said to GPHA, we want to solve a problem. And the question was, what was the problem? And we said, it is taking quite a lot on, on the part of vessel owners in West Africa to service, maintain their ships, and that all of them are leaving the west coast of the Gulf of Guinea into Las Palmas, Spain, and to Walvis Bay, Southern Africa. Now, Mr. President, a few statistics to explain this. So, at every point in time, you have about 7,000 vessels trading with West Africa. Out of the 7,000 vessels, you have one in four by regulation, commercial considerations, or emergencies to repair or maintain their vessels. Now, the ship repair market of the vessels that leave West Africa go to, as I said, Las Palmas and Southern Africa. Now, the reason simply being, and they will say to you, even though the quality of service present along our West African coast. Uh, the standard ship owners go to repair yards for three reasons. Quality, standards, price, and proximity. Provide a certain, a purpose-built floating dock from China, a new, with a capacity to lift 13,500 metric tons of load, Length of a roll would be about 200, it's 200, 200 meters in length. And so this is going to be unique. It will be the only floating dock of that size and that capacity in West Africa. 
So this is what we're doing. But the challenge was it was going to cost us a lot of money. We needed to raise $137 million to be able to achieve that. And Mr. President, it's taken us eight years to do so. But interestingly, as a private enterprise, when we started raising this money in the international market because we needed patient capital, patient and competitively priced capital to do so. Seven years down the line, I had the opportunity or the privilege to be introduced to the president. In fact, I was told to write a, a, a summary. The president didn't know me from Adam. I wrote a summary about this project. And the president read the summary. And since then, the president has advocated for this project personally. And it is the president's intervention and the patience of GPHA that has led for us getting this foreign direct investment into this country. So, Mr. President, thank you very much for all the effort. Now, when this project, to conclude, when this project is concluded in 14 months' time, we would be able to create brand new jobs, 200 brand new jobs, cash flow jobs, about 300 of them. We would also be able to, as I said, create infrastructure of a modern kind. This facility is projected to raise or to bring in revenue about $40 million a year. Mr. President, this is a game changer for the region. It's a catalyst for bringing in into Takradi, into Ghana, into West Africa, all the maritime services which we are importing presently. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you, GPHA, for all the help you've given us. Thank you very much, Mr. Aholu. So, as earlier remarked, the remarks are supposed to be very brief. And to take the next one is the, the chairman of IBISTEC in the person of lawyer Kwame Jan. Lawyer Kwame Jan to give us some brief remarks. Let's welcome him with a clap as he comes. You can do better, please, with your clap. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu, the Honorable Minister for Transport, the Honorable Regional Minister for Western Region, very distinguished invited guests, all persons have been duly recognized and all protocols duly observed. It is my singular honor to stand here in my dual capacity as the chairman of IBSTEC Limited and the chairman of Atlantic Terminal Services Limited to express gratitude to the President of the Republic of Ghana for how far we have come. Your Excellency, it is my further honor to announce to you and the whole world and this country and the people here in Gadet that IBSTEC and its partners have been able to deliver Atlantic Terminal. And Your Excellency, you just stopped by of accomplishment for IBSTEC. On the 10th of June, 2018, Your Excellency, you commissioned TAC Hotel, which is one of the companies that has been set up and developed by IBSTEC to handle containers off-site. On the 15th of September, 2020, his Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, on your behalf, commissioned the liquid box.
GPHA since we came to this Takradi area in 2016. And for GPHA management, past Director General Paul Ansan, and more especially the present Director General, Michael, you are a big brother. You have done what Napoleon couldn't do to get us to where we have reached. The president of the African Development, sorry, African Finance Corporation, our funding partners, extends his warm regards, Mr. President. He was coming to grace this occasion with you, but the, pres the, the jet they were traveling with had issues, so they couldn't make the trip from Senegal to this place. But he extends his warm wishes and congratulations on this memorable occasion. We would acknowledge you, the presence of the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. The board chairman, Esquire, Philip Addison, and all his board members are here. We acknowledge that minus the contribution of GIF, we probably will not be standing here today. I extend warm regards and congratulations to all members of Team IBSTEC, Nanaya Abwahine, Dr. Saki, and all the members of the team. I thank you all for your contributions. All of us have done it together. We thank ourselves. God bless us all. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, lawyer. Please put your hands together for lawyer Kwame Jan, the chairman for IBSTEC and ATS. At this juncture, it is now time for us to hear from our honorable sector minister. Please put your hands together for Honorable Kwaku Ofori Asiyama, Minister for Transport. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, and our Donko Kufuado, Honorable Regional Minister and MP for Takrade, Kobi Ochitidakun, Deputy Minister for Energy, a member of parliament for secondi, Honorable Mesa, Deputy Minister for Energy, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, and MP for Takwa and Sayim, Honorable Mrikuduka, Chairman and Ranking Member of Parliamentary Select Committee, Nananum, the Governing Board and Management of Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, the Governing Board and Management of Atlantic Services Terminal, Management of Prime Meridian Dock, other Chief Executives here present, ladies and gentlemen. The danger one faces who is supposed to speak before your boss is always a difficult one. You might not know what he's going to say. And if you are not careful and you see all oh, what you're going to say, you, are, you will be in trouble. And a lot of things that is in my speech has been said by the regional minister. The regional minister, he knew Takrade Port very well. The director general has said a lot of things are all in my speech. Atlantic Port Services have also said it. So if I do not take time, I'm going to repeat all the things that he said, and also say the thing that my boss is going to say. I wish I could take my seat and thank all of you. But I do not also know to be accused of saying that the minister even did not even appreciate the work that he himself has done. So when he was called to speak, he didn't say anything. So Mr. President, I will seek your permission to say some few things. I don't know that if I say things in your speech, please forgive me. I think I'm allowed to speak. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. President, I am indeed happy here today to join you for this important occasion. Today is historic for all of us as our seaports are being prepared to meet the increasing demands of the shipping industry and oil and gas service sector. I have thanked the President for taking time of his business children, Mr. President, to be with us today. And to GPHA 
and all the private sector players, I know that you are taking advantage of the vision of His Excellency to make sure that our maritime domain in Ghana become the maritime gateway in West Africa. It is a known fact that seaport and maritime transport are crucial for reaching international market, enhancing regional integration and attracting investment. Maritime transport benefit not only Ghanaian economy, but also our neighboring landlord countries of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. For these reasons, Mr. President, you sought to create an environment that is conducive for investment. Mr. President, the discovery of crude oil in commercial quantities and its related development in the country further reinforced the need for expansion of Takwadi port to facilitate potential of oil and gas sector. Modernized bulk cargo container and general cargo handling facilities and to position the, our port to handle other type of shipment to and from Ghana. Indeed, Mr. President, the project today that we've commissioned and we've launched is a carefully made expansion plan that provides for the various categories of cargo, specifically dry bulk, liquid bulk, containerized, and general cargo. The oil and gas terminal, Mr. President, is being developed to accommodate oil and gas services providers, fabrication companies, exploration companies, and suppliers. The project, when completed, will provide 21 hectares of service terminal area, 550-meter primary key wall, minus 10-meter water depth at birth, and 40-meter key wall apron for terminal operation. For the floating dock, this business venture is being undertaken by a Ghanaian company, Prime Meridian Dock, whom you assisted greatly. Mr. President, I cut the sword for this project by your, instruct by your directive in 2017. The proponent of the project had developed the idea, like he said, that preceded us. But the actual implementation started in 2017 when you directed that I should make sure that this project takes place. And I think the proponent has alluded to the help that you have given to him. The project includes dry door pocket to a 14 meter depth, dredging of the turning base to 11 dead meter, consortium of fitting out key facility, lamp based workshop and procurement of a floating dog, dry dog. This facility will be able to handle vessels of about 200 meters length overall. Mr. President, as part of your activities today, you are also commissioning the dry dog terminal. This terminal, Mr. President, is at a cost of about $85 million being undertaken by Ghana Port and Harbors Authority which is going to include birth of 60 meters, equipped with a state-of-the-art high-performance ship loaders and one eco-hopper, designed with a loading speed of 2,500 tons per hour. This is a vast improvement compared to what existed previously, which had a loading speed of, a, of less than 400 meter tons per hour. The equipment has been stored, and I'm informed can deliver 20 million tons per annum, but can also handle, to some extent, about 30 million tons. Mr. President, now to the Gangan Tuan Wan, the Atlantic Port Terminal, that lawyer Jan alluded to. This is a project that the proponent approached GPHA, the ministry, for the development of the container and multi-purpose terminal, which is part of the master plan of GPH in the process of turning Takradi port into a modern port. Mr. President, this, this is a project that in the international community, they were very much interested in it. But the decision you took, that in the entire maritime sector, in the development, there is no Ghanaian indigenous business people. 
So your first question to me was, can't we find anybody in this country to do this project? Mr. Mr. President, people have approaches that they have the capacity because they've done the on-dog one. Say, then let us support them. In the ensuing period, there were a lot of challenges. I remember at the point in time, I nearly gave up. I visited your office. You look at my face. It's a gentleman, go back. You have to believe in something. Other than that, you will not be remembered for anything. And that was the first time I heard that phrase from you. That go back, believe in something. If you did not do that, you will not be remembered for anything. And from that day, I took it upon myself that the directive given to me by His Excellency, that the Ghanaian indigenous business people should do this project will become a reality. Indeed, it was not an easy task because I had also made, my, made up my mind that I was not going to run back to the present every day. I needed to fight both externally and internally. But I was doing that shishi because I knew that the presence was behind me. I was just being used as a vehicle. So for the terminal there, what the president has gone through to put up that terminal by Ghanaian indigenous people, I'm, and I'm also happy that the confidence that president you repose in them, they have not misplaced it. And it's set as an example to other Ghanaian business people that the president will always create the noble environment first and foremost for the Ghanaian indigenous men who are prepared to take advantage of his vision. The vision of making the Ghanaian competitive. Believing in it that the Ghanaian has the capacity to compete in any world, in anybody. The president has not been misplaced and I'm happy that today you yourself, you've created time out of your business shadow to be here commissioning this project. And all what I can say is to thank you for your support, for your encouragement, for your shouting on me to make sure that this business or this venture becomes a reality. I cannot thank you more. If I did not bring this fight out to be a travesty of justice. I'm doing it, you know, no, I normally don't do this. But for the role that you've played to make sure that for the first time the Ghanaian has constructed this facility, I hope God will be our only answer to you. But maybe I will propose that in future maybe you change the name of the terminal. But I will not tell anybody. Maybe I will name it maybe after myself or after you. But you can first. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing so. Let's thank the president for the role he had played for the, this multipurpose container terminal. It has not been easy getting this far. Thank you very much, and may God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. That's a woman who is my minister. And then let's give a big clap for the president of the republic for the good job that he has done for us. And I. At the moment, we are we are going to have the keynote address by Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado, President of the Republic. Please put your hands together for the President of the Republic.
clergy, Christian and Muslim, member of the Council of State, the Western Regional Minister and Member of Parliament for Takradi, Minister for Transport, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, the Chair and Members of Parliament's Select Committee on Roads and Transport, the Member of Parliament for Second D, the Deputy Minister for Energy and other Members of Parliament, the Metropolitan Chief Executive for Second D, Takradi Metropolitan Assembly and other MMDCEs, the Chair and members of the Board of Directors and the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, the Director of the Port of Takrade, the Chair and members of the Board of the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, the concessionaires and contractors, the Vice President of the Western Regional House of Chiefs, the Chief of New Takrade, and other traditional rulers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, residents of Takrade, Second D, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be back in Takrade. Doubly so, because my presence here is for four good reasons. Firstly, to commission a new state-of-the-art dry bulk terminal. Secondly, to commission the Atlantic Terminal Services Container and Multipurpose Terminal. Thirdly, to cut the sword for the construction of an oil and gas services terminal. And, f and lastly, to launch Prime Meridian Dock Company's floating dry dock. These interventions will enhance cargo handling capacity, maintenance and repair of ships, and also meet the demands of the rigors of the oil and gas services sector within the Takradi port enclave. Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, since the commencement of operations of the port of Takradi in 1928, in the era of the most far-sighted of colonial governors, Sir Frederick Gordon Gettysburg, it has gone through many phases of development to put it in a position to meet the growing maritime trade and oil and gas services sector. Its expansion and transformation have an overarching objective of expanding the Ghanaian economy while boosting trade, regional and international trade. I'm here today because government is determined to improve maritime trade and position it as a major economic growth engine. The port of Takrade was conceived mainly because as initiated thought, it was an ideal location for the export of raw materials with which this region is endowed. But as I have said on many occasions, the idea that we can project our development goals on the production and export of raw materials and still think we can rid ourselves of the shackles of underdevelopment and poverty is not a well-grounded one. We've gone past the days where the port of Takrade was seen to be the, the preserve only of cargo imported into the country. And Takradi, the port of Tema, excuse me, was seen to be the, only, the preserve only of cargo imported into the country. And Takradi is seen as an export-oriented port. My government has never been a believer of that notion. And to demonstrate this perspective, government has worked hard to modernize the Takradi port and diversify its reliance on export of raw materials like manganese and bauxite, which has never yielded high-value returns to the country. As part of strategies to promote value-added products in sustainable mining, 
government has put a 5 million ton limit on the quantity of, mag of magazines, manganese to be mined for export in its raw form. We also intend placing an annual volume limit on the export of raw bauxite as part of the integrated aluminum development project. I'm excited to see that the dry bulk terminal, which is being commissioned today, has been equipped with an efficient cargo handling system to facilitate accurate measurement of the various export volumes for manganese and bauxite to check compliance. The terminal has also been equipped with modern ship loaders and echo hoppers for the safety of both workers and members of the port community. The terminal has been completed at a total cost of 85 million United States dollars. Chairperson, as I indicated earlier, one of the reasons for me being here this morning is to cut the sword for the work to commence on the construction of a modern oil and gas services terminal as part of the strategic development of the port of Takradi to service the emerging petroleum hub. The completion of this project, which is estimated at 98 million United States dollars, will accommodate oil and gas service providers, fabrication companies, exploration companies, and their suppliers for supply-based activities. In addition to this, I'm going to launch a floating dry dock and ship maintenance facility, which is being introduced in partnership with a wholly owned Ghanaian company, Prime Meridian Dock Limited. The initial phase of this project, which is estimated at 137 million United States dollars, is being financed by Prime Meridian Docks Limited. This initiative is meant to carry out maintenance works on vessels which otherwise would have had to call at Las Palmas, Carina, and other ship repair facilities in other countries for maintenance works. I have no doubt that these projects and many others will spur on rapid economic growth and accelerate the development of our economy. I want to take this opportunity to, to commend Prime Meridian Dock Group for this bold step as we seek to improve access to vessel repair services within the western part of the country and across the West African region. Finally, I'm also commissioning the completed ATS container terminal facility, which is part of the multi-purpose terminal, to take care of both export and import containers and conventional cargoes. Operationalization of this facility is expected to begin in February 2023. That is in three months' time. The concessionaire Another wholly owned Ghanaian entity, which has already spent 147 million United States dollars on constructing the facility, will spend the next three months equipping the facility for it to become operational. We must commend the promoters of the Atlantic Terminal Services for this dynamic and innovative step it is taking in adding to the infrastructure of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, government never loses the sight of the primacy of the private sector in our national development. And that is, I wish to commend the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority for its partnership with the private sector in rolling out these projects. We note with satisfaction the important role of the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund in mobilizing funds to support the development and implementation of these projects. The Ghanaian people and I are hopeful that the oil service terminal and the floating dry dock projects 
which I have been cutting the saw will be completed on schedule to avoid cost overruns. The benefits of these projects are considerable. The enhanced cargo and container handling capacity of the port will trigger improved service delivery and lower tariffs to the advantage of the Ghanaian and West African economies. It will ultimately ensure a competitive environment for maritime trade. I assure you, the government will continue to put in place measures and incentives to support the growth of strategic public-private endeavors to help build a strong and resilient economy. And in doing so, the flourishing of the Ghanaian business community will continue to remain government's priority. And I want to end by saying that even if I cannot make it physically to the Tardy Fest on 24th December, I'll be here with you in spirit. I thank you for your attention. Together. Please put your hands together again for the President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. And I thank you very much. At this juncture, I would like to call on the General Manager, Marketing and Corporate Affairs, GPHA, Mrs. Esther Jebi, to give us the vote of thanks. Please put your hands together for General Manager, Marketing. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, and all other dignitaries that are gathered here this afternoon. It has been such an honor for me to be part of this wonderful event. Mr. President, um, with all the praises and appreciation that has been shared by my bosses, during their speeches tells you that we are very happy and very appreciative of what you've been doing so far for the ports in Ghana. But I've been taxed to consolidate all the appreciation, so this is what I'm here to do. On behalf of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, I would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our president, Nana Adodankwa Okufuedo, the President of the Republic for making it to Takrade to be with us. Mr. President, you have been such a great support to GPHA for the past six years and we are very grateful to you. To the member of Council of States present, Honorable Ministers present, our own Honorable Minister of Transport and the Western Regional Minister we thank you indeed for being present here. Our Seta Minister has been with us all the way from day one, always giving us audience, and any time we sought his advice, Honorable gives it to us. So God bless you. Sometimes he also shouts on us, as he says the president shouts on him. The Western Regional Minister has always also cooperated with us very well on all our activities. He did mention that he's working with us to promote uh, the cruise activities in the region, and that is true. And so you can see that today's uh, program is also a success. He made a lot of inputs. Honorable, we are grateful, Yada CPE. We are also grateful to the honorable parliamentarians who are here with us especially the chairman and ranking member of the Rules and Transport Committee. Your continuous guidance and support are very much appreciated. Our sincere thanks also goes to our own board chairman and the other board members, heads of our partner organizations, including the key partners like IBSTEC and Prime Meridian Dogs for the cooperation to GPHA management and the union executives. We appreciate the role you have played. We appreciate the role you have played in the realization of this project. You are wonderful people. Continue. To those who have financed our various projects, 
We say Aiko. To the heads of security services, please accept our appreciation for this incident-free program. You have really done well. Our traditional and faith-based leaders also supported us physically and spiritually. We are grateful to them. A wide run of applause and thanks to all the participants who made this event a memorable one. And those who set up the canopies, the chairs, everybody, we are so grateful. Finally, Mr. President, I would like to thank all of you who are present here, making the time to be with us today and helping us to make the event a grand success. GPHA is highly appreciative and God bless us all. Mr. President, having expressed our appreciation to you, uh, I will at this point, after the closing prayer, invite you and the team to go to commission our bulk terminal, unveil the plaque, and then we, you are invited to the control room of the bulk terminal to have a feel of what we will be doing uh, at the place. So after the closing prayer, we invite you to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your attention. Please put your hands together for Mrs. Esther J.B. Donker for that wonderful vote of thanks. Uh, at this moment, I'd like to call on the regional chief imam, Imam Zu Kifli Abdul Wahid. Please let's put our hands together for the chief imam as he comes to give us the closing prayer. Whilst he comes, we are also recognizing the presence of Captain Ebenezer Fazi, the DOP for Takura Port, Honorable Samuel Erickson Abaka, MP for Shama, and the Chief Director of Ministry of Transport, Madam Mabel Sego. Thank you. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amen. Rasulima Undil Elehim Rebihi Ul Muminun. كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمينا وأتانا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المسير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسأها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تواهزنا إن سينا وأتانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تاكة لنا به وافعنا وغفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا السرات المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقدوم عليهم ولا الدالين Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has rolled out aggressive strategies in transforming the ports in Ghana with the aim of making them the leading trade and logistics hubs in West Africa. As part of these strategies, Tama Port has seen a lot of infrastructural activities over the past few years, including the state-of-the-art MPS Terminal 3. 
The port of Takrade, which was built in 1928, has been regarded by many as an export-oriented port. However, this is changing with the deliberate infrastructural transformation put forth by the authority. Today, we are witnessing a modern dry bulk terminal, which is equipped with all the facilities to make it run efficiently. The terminal has been designed to handle at least 30 million tons of cargo per annum. This is a significant increase over the existing throughput, which has averaged 6.3 million tons per annum. It also comes with the following facilities. More than 110,000 square meters of pavement, over 3,000 meters of drains, 33 kilovolts primary substation and electrical power systems, crane rails for the main loading and unloading equipment, fully furnished operations office building with information technology backbone for the operations of the terminal, among others. The overarching vision is to make the port of Takrade a one-stop port. And to achieve this, the Port Authority has partnered with the private sector to construct a new container terminal. This will position the port of Takrade as one of the most competitive ports in the sub-region. In addition to the container terminal, the Port Authority is also taking steps to construct an oil and gas services terminal that will leverage the growth of Ghana's oil industry. In sync with the vision is the construction of a floating dry dock facility for ship and rig maintenance and repairs. This project is also being done in partnership with the private sector. This new and innovative facility will undoubtedly attract a lot of ship repair calls from across the region. This will in turn increase Takrada's status as the oil and gas services hub of the sub-region. Indeed, all these projects will be of significant positive impact to the Ghanaian and regional economies. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has rolled out aggressive strategies in transforming the ports in Ghana with the aim of making them the leading trade and logistics hubs in West Africa. As part of these strategies, Tema Port has seen a lot of infrastructural activities over the past few years, including the state-of-the-art MPS Terminal 3. The port of Takrade, which was built in 1928, has been regarded by many as an export-oriented port. However, this is changing with the deliberate infrastructural transformation put forth by the authority. Today, we are witnessing a modern dry bulk terminal, which is equipped with all the facilities to make it run efficiently. The terminal has been designed to handle at least 30 million tons of cargo per annum. This is a significant increase over the existing throughput, which has averaged 6.3 million tons per annum. It also comes with the following facilities. More than 110,000 square meters of pavement, over 3,000 meters of drains, 33 kilovolts primary substation and electrical power systems, crane rails for the main loading and unloading equipment, fully furnished operations office building 
with information technology backbone for the operations of the terminal, among others. The overarching vision is to make the port of Takwade a one-stop port. And to achieve this, the Port Authority has partnered with the private sector to construct a new container terminal. This will position the port of Takwade as one of the most competitive ports in the sub-region. In addition to the container terminal, the Port Authority is also taking steps to construct an oil and gas services terminal that will leverage the growth of Ghana's oil industry. In sync with the vision is the construction of a floating dry dock facility for ship and rig maintenance and repairs. This project is also being done in partnership with the private sector. This new and innovative facility will undoubtedly attract a lot of ship repair calls from across the region. This will in turn increase Takwada's status as the oil and gas services hub of the sub-region. Indeed, all these projects will be of significant positive impact to the Ghanaian and regional economies. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has rolled out aggressive strategies in transforming the ports in Ghana with the aim of making them the leading trade and logistics hubs in West Africa. As part of these strategies, Tema Port has seen a lot of infrastructural activities over the past few years, including the state-of-the-art MPS Terminal 3. The port of Takwadi, which was built in 1928, has been regarded by many as an export-oriented port. However, this is changing with the deliberate infrastructural transformation put forth by the authority.